there's been a lot of interest in solar power and yeah, solar power is a great thing it, it lets us live in a place where we wouldn't be able to really live with the lifestyle that we do Okay, so the place where the solar power actually starts, obviously, is here in the panels are the collectors. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but here in the northern hemisphere, the sun travels in the southern half of the sky. So you'll always have your panels, for the most part, facing due south, because sun rises in the east, sets in the west. That keeps it as close as possible to square with the array. That's how you catch the most of your power. Now, you change the angle on your panels this way twice a year. You want to change it uh, to basically try to keep the sun, again, square with the panels so that it's as close to 90 degrees with the travel of the sun as you can get it. That way it's not coming into the panels at an indirect angle this way or this way. You want it to come in 90 degrees to those panels. Basically how you get that measurement is you take your latitude wherever you are and that is your average sun angle. That's going to be right dead center. So in the winter time you subtract 15 degrees from zero depending on which side of the 90 you're using. So you change it 15 degrees from your latitude and the winter And if you go back to where neutral would be, you'd go the other way, 15 degrees, in the summer.
because obviously you want them pointing more up at the sky like this during the summer month because the sun's going to be higher in the sky. I'll change one set of four of these to the winter angle so you can actually see the difference in what the angle is to get the, the most output from the panels. You can compare it to the others. It's quite easy to change on these on these uh, particular mounts because all you have to do is loosen two bolts and you can move four panels in unison. You don't have to uh, do each individual one. These particular panels are 150 watts each and we have 12 of them. Uh, they're probably 17 years old or so now and I have noticed that they have dropped their output probably by maybe a fifth to a third of what they were when we first moved in. So it is true, they do degrade. I'll have to eventually replace them and put some new ones up here. But the panels themselves, are they're not the most expensive part of the system. So I, that and you can replace them a few at a time. You don't have to do them all at once. But anyway, that's a brief ex explanation of what I'm doing. This is, uh, actually this is September 11th. You want to change the angle of your panels to the winter setting around the 11th or the 12th every September. You know, it's uh, the equinox, basically. It's, just, it's the same time that the sun is, is moved enough to you get the most benefit out of it by changing the angles. That's the simple way to put it. Okay, now as you can see, that is a tremendous difference in angles from spring to fall. But you got to remember, your, your 44 was the middle, so you'd add 15 to it, you know, so that's, that's how you end up getting your, uh, your optimal angle. Actually, there are more some precise formulas than the plus or minus 15, but the plus or minus 15 will get you there. I'm actually using it more, uh, the more exact formula that was provided by the solar guys. But, but that is the difference. And halfway in between those two angles would be set exactly at what your latitude setting would be, if that makes any sense at all. But by doing this, we'll get a lot more power in the winter. And also, with a steep angle on the panel like this, we can get a foot of snow, it doesn't matter. By the time the sun just barely hits them, the snow slides right off these panels. Hardly ever do we have to clean them, unless we have like an ice storm or something. But, uh, they're fairly rugged. People think they're going to come down in a windstorm, or a hurricane's going to blow them away. It's really a pretty rugged system. They've they've made things pretty pretty nice. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and change those other panels. As you can see, this isn't very complicated, it's just kind of a, you just take your time and put the angle as close as you can get it to what you want. I don't know if you can see that, let me see the camera a second. 
this is what I'm looking at. It's called a, let me get it up here so you can see it. There it is. It's an inclinometer. This one's old and beat up, but it works for these purposes. It helps me get my panels to the right angle. I've used this thing for actually a lot of things. Very handy to have around. I should probably get a new one, but it's working still. And I'm cheap. Gotta get those tight enough so they don't move in the wind. And that should be two sets. They're almost identical. What's mm -hmm. that? We go on to set number three. We should see a noticeable output difference from these. I get the pile panel inside. How much they were getting and how much they're getting now. again just want to take your time you're right about there That should be about the same. Like I said, that 15 degrees off from latitude either way is a crude measurement. There are, there are much more accurate formulas than that using your exact latitude and some other things. I'll get into explaining that a little later. But there you go. Those panels are now pointed directly at the path of the sun. And they'll stay this way until springtime. And we'll uh, add roughly, oh, I don't know, 30 some degrees to them and they'll be laying back down again because the sun will be higher in the sky. But that's how that works. You'll notice they all look about the same. The poles aren't in exactly the same plane. That one up there is a little further back. So they look, look like they might not be exactly perfect. But And I'm only going by one panel. I'm not checking all of them. which is, It's always been close enough. So it works for us. So that's all there is to adjust in the panels. Or collectors, whatever you want to call them. There's been a lot of interest in solar power, and solar power is a great thing. It, it lets us live in a place where we wouldn't be able to really live with the lifestyle that we do. Um, but it is not cheap. I mean, you, you think you solar power, you don't have to pay an electric bill, and that is true. But you got to buy all of the equipment, and you also are the person that has to maintain that equipment. There's not really a number you can call. Uh, for somebody that doesn't like dealing with electricity, <laughs> that can be a bit of a, a bit of a stretch sometimes. But I had to learn as I went. I had a mechanical background. That's kind of where I'm from, so you just have to be careful. And most of your electricians don't know much about DC power. You're almost better off to do it yourself, as far as the solar end of it. You know, you're. Uh, 12 volt, you know, your DC side, you're going to have to kind of take care of that yourself. Once you get to your inverter and your AC side, an electrician's going to be beneficial to you. But out here, 
unless it's a special electrician that's used to dealing with solar or 12 volt power or D again DC power uh, it's like a plumber trying to understand gravity feed water without a pump sometimes it's just something they haven't dealt with they're used to one thing and that's it anyway so that's that part of it